And all I want you to do is this. Just try and go right, but don't go past them. Change position just till you get to here, and then you, re then you reverse it. So you know I'll do a little demonstration for us, okay? So go, you go left and right. I've got to try and follow you back. Okay, now you're going to do it with me, you ready? Go. Okay, do you understand, lads? Yeah. It's on this line, out to this line, off we go. And then back again. Good stuff, and then back again. Don't stop, don't stop. Keep going. Do you want to go with me? Oh, you go with him, look. Give us your ball there, I'll mind the fight. Keep going. And to the line again. I want you to sit down a little bit more. Sit down a little bit more and keep one hand on his chest. So you come to me again. Keep one hand on his chest. Go left and right. Go left and right. Keep one hand on his chest. Then you put your hand on my chest. And I've got to go. Keep going, good man. Make sure you sit down. Sit down, ready? Go. So guys, just bring it in again. Bring it in nice and tight. Keep going. That's really tough on the body. Really tough on the legs, because when I call them in there, you can hear them all. Because <gasps> they're not used to this. I didn't say stop. Keep going. Keep going. Well done. Keep going. Keep going, sit down. And when they get tired, they start to stand up high because the muscles can't take it. Because when we were kids, we were on bikes all day. They're not. And freeze. This time. Good stuff, I'm gonna go with you now. This time, it's like this. You go, go, go left and right at me. You know, keep them here, keep going left and right. Bit more, come on, I'm nearly 50, come on. Keep going, keep your hold there. You put your hurl on me, just place it on me. That's it, keep me there. Keep me there, good lad. Keep me there. Well done. Hand and hurl on him. Well done. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop. Freeze, bring it in here. Get the guy over here, your job is to get to the cone and just touch it with your hurl. What's your job? Stop him. Stop him. Don't let him get to that cone. You ready? Go. Swap over. Swap over, quick. Well done, swap over, swap over. Keep going, swap over, go. And your job, as soon as he touches that ball and comes at you, you've got to come out and try and stop him getting to that cone, okay? So it's like this, come up. So how many, and I've got to go. Good man, don't let me get to the cone. You see what he's doing there? And we swap off for each go. Ready? Go. To the cone, well done. Off we go. Off we go. Ready? Sit down from. Each, ready? On, you ready? Ready? Three, two, one, go! And freeze, take a break there. The key to this is, and these are quite good at it, is keeping the shoulders square. So if I keep my shoulders square at you and my feet do all the work, I can still keep you on you. Now here's the thing, we see a lot of players, when a player comes down, she just walk it, we walk, and you do this. And what's the problem with this? Shoulder to the chest, if he's the ball, what's the problem? It's a free to him, right? 
I am not, the, the rules don't say that I'm obliged to get out of his way. So what I should do, teach him to do, is if he comes out, stay square and let him come over me. If he runs into me and I go over, what's it then? It's barging, just because I went from, from this position, because it's human nature to protect all your organs. When someone comes at you, it's human nature to do this and protect children. It's not human nature to leave yourself open to attack. So you're trying to coach them to keep the shoulders square and move their feet and sit down. So you can forget about defending goals unless you can get their players, your players to move properly. If they can't move, it doesn't matter. You can teach all the other skills. If they can't move their feet properly, it's not going to work. Okay? So we're going to put them into a little bit of a game now where they're going to have to really do it for real. Okay? So you guys are on the pitch. So can you guys just outside the cones? Okay. Cross the end line with the ball in your hand. Okay? You listen up. You're not allowed to strike the ball, but you can solo and hand pass. Okay? But you cannot strike. When you're defending, remember I told you you're defending, sit down low. You ready? You have to cross the line with the ball in your hand. Are you guys ready? Go! Go! There's the ball. You can only solo a hand pass. So, try and cross that line down there. Go! Square. Well done. Well done. Take him on, take him on. Well done, good lad. Lad. Well done. One nil. Come on, babes, you gotta get a score now. Good stuff. Square. Well done. Okay. So the idea, lads, you can solo the hand pass. You're trying to cross the end line. When the opposition have the ball, sit down. Keep your whole hand out like this, okay? Go. There's no striking. It's only solo and hand pass. Well done. Good man. It's a hand pass free, go. Sit down low. Good stuff. And break. Okay guys, take a break over there. This, remember earlier when we did this position earlier on with them sitting down like this? The idea of this is, I see a lot of underage players and they defend like, like down here. And the problem is, if this guy here is, is going to hand pass, sorry, is going to hand pass this guy here, we'll work in the first touch later. <laughs> so if this guy is going to hand pass this guy, and my, my hurl down here, when he hand passes, just hand pass it. That's too, for me to bring my hurl up here now is too late. That's just too late. You're not going to, be, if you're lucky, you might get it. What I want to do is, if he has the ball, I'm like this, and I'm already, I'm already a problem. So this is where I want to be. Because if he throws up the strike, I can block. If he goes to hand pass, I can block. Now earlier on I said, remember I said, come in like this early, put your hand and your hurl on him. So if I can get my hurl here, just place it on his arm, it stops him hand passing the ball. So if I can just get here early, and try and get there, he's over carried the ball already, because he's trying to be smart at <laughs> But the idea is that you're not trying to react to a hand pass from here to here. It's too late. You're coming in and you're ready. So if I'm here, I can potentially block. The nearer I get, the better chance I have of trying to get, trying to get the ball. But if I come in down here, he just hand pass it by me, and I'm trying to react to the ball. And it's just too slow. It's too slow. So bring it in tight again. So, 
Next thing we work on, we want to work on the hook, okay? It's, it's an awkward one. A lot of coaches don't like coaching it, and a lot of kids don't like doing it either, okay? So what I prefer to call it is setting the trap. So setting the trap means getting in early. So if this lad here is, what I want the player to do is have the hurl between the elbow and the shoulder immediately. Instead of waiting, because here's the thing, if he has the ball, I can't, and he's stolen away from me, I can't see his eyes, I can't read his mind, so I don't really know what he's going to do. So what happens is, a good player like him, and he was a good player, he'll fake it, and a lot of players do this. You see not a, lot, not a lot of kids trying to hook like this. Once you commit like this, you're out of the play. Because it's very hard for me to read what he's going to do. So if he solves with the ball, he takes, once I get to here, once I can get my hurl between here and here, I have a chance. Okay, so will you hang on a minute there, Johnny? That's so this is, the, the, we go back, this is where I want the hurl, okay? Now, if I my hurl here as we're running along, which direction is he going to go? He's going to go left, where I want him to go. He's not going to go right. So by me just having my hurl here, he goes to his left probably, bring the hurl over here. So if he just, say, just ready position, go into your lock grip, okay? Just go into your lock grip like this. The higher I hook, the less power he has. So just strike. So the higher, go on, strike. The higher I hook, one finger, strike. The higher I hook, go really strike, that he's not power up there. So you see a lot of guys teaching the hook down here, down low. So John, now strike. Now just go for a ground strike. Again, he can still get some kind of a strike away. But if I can get up here high, it's like being in a telephone box. This is where I want to be, up here. As high as I can get, right? So we're going to get these into pairs and do a little simple drills and then we get a bit more speed stuff. Okay. Okay. Ready position, just jogging. I'm going to go lock, strike. Back to ready, lock, strike. Anywhere you want to go, it's just jogging, strike. Your job at the guy at the front, your job is to coach the guy at the back. So don't go running away down the field on him because you won't get a hook in. The guy is doing the hook, I'm over here to be quick. Here's what I want you to do, okay? See his elbow and his shoulder. I just want you to leave your hurl there and just don't move it from there. Just go for, go for the jog and strike. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stay in that side, stay in that side, stay in that side. Good man. Okay, off you go, off you go. Just come in here quick. The reason we want the guy in front to keep on the same side is because who are we coaching? The guy in front or the guy behind? So if the guy in front starts going, ha ha ha, the guy in the back learns nothing, okay? We'll move that on now in a second, okay? So keep it on the same side. Keep it on the same side. Some of us, some of us are walking. Well done. And freeze. Right side, left side. After the jog. Right side, left side. Right side, left side. Right side, left side, right side, left side. Between each strike, go back to red. Okay? Off we go. Go. What happens when they know they're being hooked? What happens to their swing? They start alternating, they start changing to try and beat the, beat the hook. Isn't that the perfect scenario? That when you get in a guy, he actually tries to alter his swing so he can't strike. We don't want them doing the perfect strike every time. Keep going. Nice and easy. So the first two run out, the fella in front is running out. Fella behind, what does he do? Full speed. Then the next two from here, come around here on your left side. The guy behind is hooking him. You ready? Go. Fast you can. Sprint all the way in, go! Wrong side, he's sitting on his left. Yeah, when they come over, next man up, go! Where were you? Where were you? Good man, next two, go! Well done, sprint it in. Wait for him, wait for him, go! Next two, catch him, catch him. You're striking that way. On the hook, wrong side, freeze! We see the problem. Stay there, lads. Now go back over there. These are under 14s. Okay, we're we watching lads. Come, two of you come over. When you're coming out, 
You're striking this way, along the line. Go. Come on. Go. Well done. Wait for the call. Wait for the call. Go. Well done. Wait for the call. Because you're getting a jump on him. Go. Well done. Come on, come on. Wait for the call. Go. Wrong side. Freeze. Come back here. The two of you. Who was the striker there? Okay, stand in front again. Come behind him again. So watch. You're on this side of him. He's striking that way. Just walk it through. This is where you need to be. You're on the other side. Do it again. Do it again. Ready? Go. Good lad. Wait for the call. Go. Full speed. Well done. Wait for the call. Go. Good man. Wait for the call. Go. Good man. Where are you going? Go. Good man. Well done. And go. Good lad. Bring it and have a rest, lads. Bring it and have a rest. So what are we working on there? We're working on the hook, but hang on, hang on. The hook is like really broad. What, what, what are we working on there for the, take the whole player into consideration? If we can't answer this, we're in trouble. Are we working on any speed? Are we working on speed? Were they sprinting out? Yeah, we're working on speed, a bit of fitness. Are we working on their brains because some of them were going the wrong side, weren't they? Need to figure out, geez, which side do I need to be on? Now, even though we had set up really simple for them, some of them were missing the point, we're, we're missing it all together. So when it comes to a match, how can we expect them to do it in a match? They can't do it over here. So this is a, this is a staple one that Kim McCudd do, Bally Bowden do, Nafina do, all the senior teams do this one. For, they do the speed work and they, they hide the hook in, in, into it, you know what I mean? Now, what you don't want these, you don't want the lad get, getting a jump on a fella, and then the fella behind doesn't get to do anything. So we're working on speed, the older guys then, after they get the hook in, turn the corner and, and heading back the other way, okay? Bit of brains, bit of technique, but that technique, getting the hurl in, because it's easier to run like this than it is to run like this and then try and do this. It's very hard to run like this and then do this at full speed. It's quite easy to run like that full speed. That's quite easy. It's nice and balanced. This is not balanced. You see a lot of players as well run like this, particularly Komogi players, okay? So, we're going to have a bit of a possession game now, right? We're going to suspend the hand pass. They can only strike. So we're, all we're trying to do is hook all the time, okay? We suspend the hand pass. Why? Yeah, we just want them striking. We just, but also, let's see, can they think and, and, and not use the, the hand pass? Okay. We're striking only. Go. Try and get Try and get it. Go on, go on, go on. Stay on him, stay on him, stay on him. Get up, hook. get a hook in, hook. Oh, no. He can only strike. Did you see when, when this, see the guy with the, the, the kind of lime green and grey top on, the tall lad? He had his hook in the right place and he forced his man just to do this. Like that, like if, you can, if, that's what, if that's the worst he's going to do, happy days. We don't want that big, long, booming strike. But we've got a few good little hooks in there because we took out the hand pass. It forced him to strike and force them to get that hook in, okay? Now, we're gonna move around a bit, we're gonna move on to the front of the block, okay? That's another one, and then we're gonna go on to the rook, what we do in the rook, okay? Because it is part of the game now, and we have a great drill for this, and it's bloody tough, like, okay? Right, lads, bring it in here. So, the normal way, so give me some teaching points. I'm, I'm an under eight, teach me how to do the front of the block. So shout out some teaching points. Get low. Get low. So I'm gonna do exactly what are you telling me to do? Okay, all right. So let's think again. Reach. 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 Yeah, reach. What am I reaching with though? Hurl up. Hurl up. 
Two hands in the hood. Thumbs facing up. Told he was good. That's a man already was in Ibiza years ago. Thumbs up. Okay, so we'll go through very quickly. What's the first thing we work on? Feet. And years ago, the phrase that we used was what? Genuflect. Remember the genuflect? Genuflect. Like this, lads. I'll just say, just step forward, right? Step forward. Now, here's the thing. The question I ask about young players is, before we do with any of this, is, what's this in the gym? Lunge. The first question you've got to ask yourself is, can they lunge? Can they get the body to this position? Because these guys cannot move as good as you guys can. They won't believe us. But if, if they can't lunge properly in this position with both legs, then we're going to have a problem. Because we're going to have this kind of stuff and this stuff. Whereas we want this stuff, as you said, get low. We want this kind of stuff. Okay? So I suggest you work on the lunge and the squat. All those movements with your players. It's really, really important. Okay? So the, old, the way we normally teach it is we lunge in or we step in. Okay? Front knee bent, tongues behind, rub with the elbows, lock the elbows, okay, locking the elbows makes a massive difference, when the elbows are bent, there's a bit of give there, so you want locking the elbows, now I know all these guys can do the two handed one, right, so we're going to do a basic force, and we're going to pick it up a bit, alright, so all I want you to do is just with your partner real quick, get your partner, okay, you don't need a ball, okay, all I want you to do with your partner is this, so I'll, I'll go with you, just all I want you to do, okay, all he's going to do is, he's going to pretend he's a ball, he's going to go one, two, strike. And he's going to go one, two, strike, one, two, strike. And I'm going to follow him, right? So we're going to go that way first, go. One, two, Jesus, two, strike. <laughs> one, it's a demonstration purposes. <laughs> we played against each other years ago and I gave him a little slap, he's trying to get me back. We're going that way first, one, two, one, two, so watch, left leg, left leg, so it's left, the reason is I can push off back that way, if I go here and he changes position, very, very hard for me to get back like this, these guys need to know to go left leg, push off, right leg, push off, do you understand, does that make, does that make sense? What should they be doing as far as the hurl and ball concerned? Blocking the hurl or covering the ball? Oh, Cover the ball. Years ago we were taught, just bring it here good man. We were taught, hold your hurl, tape on tape. I have a huge problem with tape on tape. Because if I'm half a second late, what happens? The ball's still gone past me. And our manager goes, Jesus, well done Johnny, you nearly got him. You're nowhere near him. What I want you to do is cover the ball to the hurl or where the ball would be. So it's about covering the ball. Forget about the stick. When the ball leaves his hand, you want that covering the ball. Because a good player like him will fake it and then come over here over here. And we come in like this with loads of violence. The way we were taught if it's a free take or break his hurl. Do you remember them days? Okay. So all I want you guys to do is concentrate on the boss of the hurl. So me and you will do it, you're going to go that way first. Go, one, two, block, one, two, block, one, two, block, one, two, block. And then what we're doing every time, sitting down and stepping in. Off you go, off you go. So one of you goes first for 20 seconds, then the other fair takes a turn. Don't come slamming down, don't slam. Just cover the ball, cover the ball. Come on. Don't just cover the ball. Freeze. Here's something I'm seeing. Some of them are doing this, look. So, if I do this, I've measured this. I've actually measured it, okay? To do this and come back down from the ready position is three yards. The, the boss of the hurl moves three yards. It goes from here to here. That's one yard, two yards, three yards. Whereas I'm going from ready position just to here. From ready to here, how many yards is it you reckon? It's one yard, so it's three times faster. So we're really breaking it down now into time now. It's three times faster. This thing, by the time, the way the game's gone now, by the time you're bringing it back, listen up, listen up. By the time he's bringing the hole back down, the ball's already gone past. 
and he comes down the hall and it's great to watch him now. Rob. Well done Rob, Jesus, the very legend Rob, yeah. And Rob's thinking he's great, runs away. And we're coaching Rob wrong. So lads, all I want you doing is in your ready position, you're going to go from here to here. So here to here, 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 here. Forget about this. Go again. The other guy strike now. The other guy strike now. So, see what happens? Keep going. Just cover the ball. Good lad. This fella has it here, look. He has it. Don't mind me. Look at the difference. Keep going. Look at this one. Look at this one. Guys, look at this one. Look at this one. Keep going. What are you stand for? Look at this fella and this fella. Freeze. This fella, does he, did he steal your girlfriend? Because you're trying to kill him. Look, Jesus. This fella here. I have you now. I have you now. I have you now. Even though I did take your girlfriend anyway. I still have you now. So I don't want you to try and kill him. Money will sort it out later, right? Here's what you're doing. I want you to watch this fella here. Go. He's not coming down the hurl. He's covering the ball. He's covering the ball. He's covering the ball. Go again. Go again, lads. Go again. Cover the ball. Don't come down the stick. Now he has it. Look. Good lad. Good lad. Bit more power. Bit more power in the block. Bit more power in the block. And freeze. Change over. The other guy strike now. At least three steps. Three steps to the right. Go. Just cover the ball. Cover the ball. Don't mind the stick. The stick is just an illusion, lads. It'll fool you with the stick. Well done. And freeze. Bring it in. Guys, just stay there. So, we don't want them blocking down on the stick. We want them covering the ball. Because this fella, he had them. Kenny blocking from 10 yards away. Why? How? Covering the path of the ball. And I reckon when you're 10 yards, you have 10% chance. Every yard, I reckon the percentage comes down by 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100% chance of blocking you, but just by covering the ball. Because if we, if we teach blocking down the stick, if the kid is 10 yards away, he won't even make an attempt, because in his head, I'm not near the stick. We want them to cover the ball. Cover the ball, okay? Because remember, if a player does this and fakes this way, and you dive in like this, you're out of the play. Whereas you just cover the ball and you this way, you can recover very quickly and get across. But remember I said earlier on, the feet are very, very important. If they can't lunge, if they can't lunge at right foot and left foot, you can teach this all day long. The start of the session said, if they can't get their feet in the right position, they won't be able to make the, to do the, to perform the skill anyway, okay? Now, next little drill before we do the rook stuff. Okay, this comes back to footwork, okay? When we're doing the flick, we start in ready position, we come from here, already, flick, already, listen up, you two, stand out for a second, out you go. So, already, flick, do you two know where I put you? Talking, come back in. Here's what I want you to do, come on over here to me. Here's the, here's the drill. Okay, so watch, flick, flick, right foot, Left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. Why am I going back to ready position? Why? Why from here and not from here? This is faster and a bad referee will do you for this. And he'll certainly do you for this. But we want to come in here, tight under here. So it's left foot, flick. See this arm under here? Flick, back around here, right foot. Flick, back under here, left foot, right foot, right. If we do it the opposite way, right foot, left foot. See it? I'm all over them. If I do it this way, you know that we do football, lads? Now we shouldn't be mentioning football anyway. Near hand tackle, near foot, near foot, near foot. You keep your hold down. So pair off. Off you go for 30 seconds. You ready? Keep your hole on the ground. Look, hole on the ground. Sit down. Squat down. Go. 30 seconds, as fast as you can. 
Get that near foot in. Get that near foot in. Get that near foot in. Good stuff. Get that near foot. Good man. Good man. Near foot. Near foot. Near foot. Near foot. Freeze. Go. Get your near foot in. Near foot in. Good lad. Good lad. Look at this fella. Keep going. Good man. You see, you go as far as you can for 10 seconds. 10. Nine, six, five, four, three, two, one. Freeze. I want you to do it again. Stay. Keep your hold down. I want you to do this. Look. Right foot. Left foot. Just on your own. Go. Left foot. Right foot. Left foot. Right foot. Left foot. Right foot. Good man. Okay. Have a little rest, lads. So bring it in guys for a second. Do you see how important footwork is? Because they, didn't, they don't play the way we played. As I said earlier on, we were on bikes, we climbed walls, we ran everywhere, we trained all day, every day. That's what we did. They don't, okay, they don't. And that's just a fact of life. So earlier on, we spoke about defend the player coming at you. First question is, can he squat down and move backwards? The chances are they can't. They weren't bad actually. Can you move left? Can you move right? Can you lunge to right foot? Can you lunge to left foot? See in there, coming in like this, there's a lot of footwork in that. Like look at my feet there. There's an awful lot of footwork in that. So you can teach the flick all day long, but if they can't get their feet in the right position in the game, get their feet in, it's, the skill's not gonna happen, okay? Now, 14s. So, I'm gonna give you a number. Three. Come on, Tyke. Well done. Get to the ball. Get to the ball. Get to the ball. Good lad. Well done. Good stuff. Well done. Keep going, lads. Well done. Well done. That's where I want you over the ball. I want you over the ball like this. Like you're sitting on a potty, lads. Short grip. Get over the ball. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. When I call the number, it's just gets the ball. He's the winner. Do you understand? Three. Two. Who's going to get it? Throw it in. Quick. One. Well done. Good man. Three. <coughs> Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? And... So players just hang on there for a second. Coaches come in here for a second. And... The Bengals. <clears throat> so, so two things about the Rook, right? Is, and I've, I've, I've done a lot of video analysis on the Rook. On average, eight players go into a Rook. On average, only three can see the ball. Five have an idea it's over there somewhere. And what happens is, by the time one fella gets the ball and takes off, if you watch any match and slow it down, watch it, there's still four or five fellas pushing for a ball that's not actually there. So, the kind of rule I try and bring in is that they're in a run, it's one attempt and kick it out. Who's the first person to know where the ball is gone when it's been kicked? You do. You are. So you won't attempt, if you get it, you're grand. If you get it, you kick it out ahead of you. And the kick you've made is your first step to run. So, missed the ball, kick, there's my first step. I now have a yard on everyone else before they even know where the ball's gone. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah? I have a yard already. Also, if, if that's part of your team play, you know, your team know it's gonna come out. So, so some teams commit loads. 
And the Pearshik should have bet cool it in the, in the first or second match. There was 27 rooks in the match. And the Pearshik last year won 19 of 27 rooks because he just did this and he kicked it out. Kula had an awful habit in the rook of holding the horse full length. The problem with holding the horse, the people say, you're protecting the ball, but there's a lot of space in there. So if, what's your name? Michael. If Michael's like this, full length over the ball, pretend he's the ball there, it's very easy for me to come in and take that space. Whereas if Michael is on his potty with short grip, it's very hard because he's protecting with this knee here, okay? Another thing as well is, with one-on-one -on -one stuff, so Michael, just say, you're just down over, just hold a position for the ball. I see players, even into Kenneth level, coming over this side, over this side. The problem is, his arm and his hurl are protecting the ball. I don't understand. To me, the gap is here. The gap is in here. There's the gap. And that comes back to, remember the little flick we did earlier on? I see a lot of into and they come in like this, and they come underneath like this. But all of this is protecting the ball. His arm and his hurl is all protecting the ball. Why not come in on the hand that's going to catch the ball and just interfere here, just interfere over here? But remember, say about footwork, flick, you can come out. If you can flick, if you can get that footwork in, if I miss it and he gets it in his hand and he turns to me, get in your hand, I'm still here because of good footwork. If I don't have good footwork, I can't do that. If a bad footwork, here's what happens. I come over here and I miss and he gets it and he's gone, I'm on the wrong side of him. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, uh, one other thing I want to cover, yeah, it's a good man. So positioning on the pitch. If there's one thing to take away today is on puck outs, tell your midfielders and halfbacks, this is what, what I do, to stand on the, the other guy's catching hand. Because to, good players, the ball's coming in, he says, hurl up here, he can keep me away from here. If I just quite simply stand on his catching hand side before the ball's even pucked out, I have a huge advantage. Even if I'm left-handed, I have a huge advantage. I can just interfere here. But if I'm over here, I can't get to the ball no matter what happens, okay? Now, some people say, let's say I'm left half back, he's right half forward, okay? Or should we always want them goal side, don't we? That's what we say. I'd say one and three puck outs, get your half back to stand out here. Because the keeper looks up, what does he see? He sees me, in the he sees me where he normally is, and he goes, oh, fuck, I'll go over here. He changed his mind. So he sees me there, whereas normally, you know, the defender's here, and that's where he put the ball a lot of the time. But if I'm here every second or third puck out, and I'm here, it makes the keeper stop for a second and just kind of go, no, no, I'll go to the other side. If the other back's doing the same thing, he lumps it down the middle. And that's where all the defenders want the ball. They want it in a big mess. They don't want it one-on-one. -on -one. How long is the ball in the air? On average for a puck out, three seconds. Three seconds is a lot of time to do this. So I do a lot of jiu-jitsu with air lads as well. And we do a body positioning, okay? So in jiu-jitsu we have like quarter second to change position. In hurling you have three seconds to get in here or to get in here. So see here? So that's where I want to be there. I'm not fouling them. That's where I want to be, right there. But I have three seconds to make me, to, to judge it. But if I'm here already, Sure, I've, I've gone, put your hand up. This is where I want to be. Oh, just, so if he doesn't get it, as a defender, I've done my job. If he doesn't even get the ball, job done. Okay? So, I think we're going to swap over now. Before we go, any questions or anything? No? We have two hands. I would say, or under 12, one hand to block the ball. And, then and if they block it, they might get their hand to it. And the squat them down that you're pushing it front of the chest. This, this, this squat position. You need to get them squatting. In the Fiend at the nursery this morning, we have four-year-olds doing overhead squats with their hurley. And they're doing it inside a tyre. They step inside the tyre, they sit on the tyre, up out of the tyre. That's four years of age. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. If you can't, if, if I can only get my hand to here, because I don't have range of most of my shoulders, here to here, when you measure it, is about six inches. That's the difference between getting the ball and not getting the ball, or being able to catch the ball here. If your players can only go to here, it's a problem. So we, we do a lot of elective, elective development in the Fiend now, where we have to do an overhead squats. You know, mine's not great now, but marching in and out tires. So movement is key. You can teach the skills all day long, but the way kids are nowadays, they need to be able to move. The whole, the whole ABCs, 
and we tested kids from 6 to 12. The 6-year-olds could squat better than the 12-year-olds, because the 12-year-olds had just forgotten about it. 12-year-olds were like this. And what happens in Ireland is, they get to 16, they stick a bar on his back and say, now squat that. Like, Jesus Christ. So you've got to keep them squatting. The squat is the king of all exercises. So I'd say the squat, overhead squat, lunges. What, what, skill, in, what skill in hurling are we lunging every time? And what else? Pick up. There's the lunge. If I can't lunge effectively, this is what happens. This high, this high lazy pickup. The ball gets away, it's flicked away and stuff like that. So we need to be able to teach them how to lunge as well. And the best way to teach them to lunge is using the hurl. There's the hurl. Over the hurl. Touch the hurl with your knee. Back over again. Touch the hurl with your knee. Back over again. That's all it is. You don't need any special equipment. That's all it is. Yeah? The length of the hurl again. Length of the hurl. Back. The length of the hurl. Back. Okay. It's like if you were going to play golf, lads, do you a few swings beforehand? Yeah. Don't expect them to have the jab lift the ball unless they can warm up down here and they can get down to that position. See you later, lads. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs>